<clears throat> well, good morning. It's Thursday, March the 3rd. We're reading from Romans 8, 22 through 25. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So here he sort of ties the argument he's been making about creation uh, back to um, humanity and the believers. We also have the spirit, and so we are groaning inwardly as we wait for adoption, just as creation is groaning as it waits for uh, God to fulfill its purpose. And so um, this business of adoption uh, you know, in the ancient world, when you were adopted, you became legally like a natural-born child. There was no distinction made uh, legally uh, between um, someone who was adopted into the family and someone who was born into the family. They were the same. Uh, <coughs> um, and and some of the ancients made a big deal about that. You know that. I was, you know, someone was adopted into the emperor's family, for instance, and became emperor, and everybody was like, well, how could that happen? But legally, he was the same as a son, uh, as a child. So let's broaden this out from sons to children, we're, and we're waiting for our adoption as God's children. Um, in one way, it's already happened. In another way, it's not yet happened, and we're kind of in that weird in-between stage that we always talk about. Um, where we're waiting and we're hoping, but yet we're, we know it's going to happen. So he says, we don't hope for what we've seen. We hope for what we haven't seen. And we wait for it with patience. So there's something we can cultivate. You know, in this fast food instant gratification society in which we live, um, Waiting for something with patience is a, is a real different sort of skill. Everybody wants everything to be done right away, right now. They don't want to be on hold for two minutes. They don't want to have to wait in line for three minutes. You know, I go to the CVS and there's all this cars lined up around the building. I think a lot of people are getting testing. A lot of people have just become accustomed to drive up. And, you know, so people will wait 15, 20 minutes for their turn at the drive-up window. Meanwhile, I park, walk inside, get my drugs, um, pay the bill, walk back out, get in the car and drive away, and the line has moved, you know, two cars. So um, sometimes these drive-ups aren't as convenient as, as we think they are. Uh, but the illusion is that we're getting everything fast, instant gratification, uh, fast food. You want to drive up and get it. You don't even have to wait. If you go to Chick-fil-A, they've got people out there with little um, devices taking your, taking your order as you wait around the building. And by the time you get around to the, where you pay, they just hand you your food and you drive off. So you don't even have to wait there at the ordering window. Um, so that's very efficient, I guess. But it, it feeds this mentality that everything should happen instantly. We should be able to get something right now, right when I want it, have my desires met, have my whims met, have my needs met, and that way I'll be happy. And if I have to wait a minute or two or five, I'll start complaining. That's, the, uh, that's where America is these days, and I think that's part of the reason why you know, the president is so worried that if he does this or that or this or that about Russia, then our gas prices are going to go up a few cents or a nickel or 50 cents, and everybody's going to scream and yell and complain. Our gas prices have been cheap worldwide, considered worldwide, for, for decades, and so why shouldn't we pay a little more? Um, but 
we're accustomed to everything coming to us instantly and cheaply and right away and don't change anything don't 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 make me wait and paul says we wait with patience let's just learn patience and we'll be better off if we learned how to just take a deep breath and wait till in the morning it'll be okay then i think we'd be better off in much of our lives so that's our, um, those are our reflections for today, and tomorrow we continue uh, plowing through Romans 8. We're getting closer to that brilliant ending. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.